Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. No, I don't normally try and cram nine wines into a tasting, but uh, I've, been just, I've just been sent a, uh, a set of wines from Spa. Might as well see if I can do it. And um, let's see if we can keep it down to under 10 minutes. Well, let's give it a go. First one I have got uh, is from Lake Garda, Garganiga Pinot Grigio, uh, made by Villa Cero. And 2017 vintage, let's give it a whirl. Smells just what I expect. Um, slightly a bit citrusy, a bit apple-y. Uh, it smells like it's going to be fresh, simple, gluggable. What I call fair enough wine. It's not, uh, there's nothing remarkable about it. Uh, the sort of thing that would slip down slightly too easily on a hot day. Um, but maybe nothing I really want to cross the road for. Let's see whether uh, another uh, Pinot Grigio uh, sort of wine will, um, will, uh, will best that. So this is uh, Wildflower Pinot Grigio uh, all the way from Romania. Has it got a vintage on here? I can't see one. Uh, but anyway, let's give it a whirl. This smells a little bit lighter, a little bit zippier. Um, Alcohol-wise, um, the um, no, I can't see 12%, and the other one is 11.5%. Uh, so this is slightly weightier, but it smells like it's a, a crisper, finer, sleeker style. Let's have a see. Yeah, there seems to be a bit more body and uh, juiciness and slightly peachy edge to the fruit there. Uh, and um, yes, it's got it. It smelled like it was going to be a little bit crisper, but when you come to taste it, it has got that crisp edge but it's got this peachy roundness. So peachy roundness, citrus and apple acidity. Pretty, I quite like that. Uh, next one, uh, Brindle Ridge Chardonnay. We're still in Romania here, um, weighing in at 13% alcohol, vintage 2017. Uh, let's give this one a whirl. Smells a bit um, confected. Uh, uh, I don't know whether it's a yeast thing or um, whether they've done a little bit uh, of skin contact to try and get a little bit of aroma in, but in the process of extracted some, some of the um, phenolics from the grape skin. I don't think it's got oak here. Um, oh, it says hint of vanilla spice, so maybe there is a touch of oak. Uh, probably not barrels, I'm not sure. Yeah, I've got a feeling of, um, yeah, madeness about them. So this is confected, um, slightly false vanilla character sweet shop and... Um, Sure, that dib dabs type of thing. So, not no, I'm Peter Grigio's winning so far. Let's see how we get on with the, a uh, Tino Pie Sauvignon Blanc. You look at the label and you'd swear that it was going to be a, um, a New Zealand one, but um, it's from France. Not sure whereabouts in France it is, but um, it's 2017 vintage. Let's give it a whirl. Well, some Sauvignons jump out and grab you. This one's a bit more, um, ooh, well, it's not jumping out and grabbing me. It, it, in fact, I smell it and um, there's really, really isn't an awful lot coming out. Um, and is that going to be a good thing or just a, uh, a sign that there's maybe not quite enough wine there? Let's have a see. And it has got some of that um, slightly catty, um, very much French Sauvignon rather than a more exuberant uh, style, from, style from New Zealand or elsewhere. And fresh, clean, quite bracing edge, almost a salty edge to it. Um, I quite like that. Um, hmm. Okay, let's see how we get on with uh, uh, wine number five. So this is another Garganiga Pinot Grigio from Lake Garda, but this is the rosé version. Sorry, the blush version. Um, it's, well, I don't know if you can see it against the grey. It, it looks... Uh, almost like slightly diluted dental water. I, I'm not saying that that's a uh, negative or a positive, it's just a, an observation. Now I prefer that to, to the white. It seems we've got a little bit more of that peachy weight that I was getting with the, uh, with the Romanian Pinot Grigio. Um, so yeah, there's a juiciness, a softness, roundness, um, and um, yeah, decent enough. Um, yeah. A uh, step up from the from the white. Golly, my spittoon's getting a little bit full. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you about the next wine, and then while I'm doing all my sniffing and spitting, I'll also go and empty it. Uh, the next one is, uh, we're, uh, sorry, I'm just choking it, but we're back with Wildflower, and it's, it's, it's the Pinot Noir this time. Now, as I was saying with the Brindle Ridge Chardonnay, there was um, a, a slightly fake, I call it, well, so we're just hiccuping here. A slightly fake vanilla -y character. I get that here. A little bit of confection, um, uh, but, but quite, quite smells like quite pleasant raspberry and cherry aromas. Let's see whether that um, slight oak confection then blends in with the rest of the wine. It's okay. Um, you sort of fruits there. It's got this slightly tart edge, and um, actually the finish. 
uh, that's when I noticed that um, bitter edge of um, not particularly great quality wood. This is where I find out there's no, there's no oak in it at all. But um, yeah, there's something there that feels like someone's tried to uh, put an, a slightly oaky imprint on it. Um, but I think I'd have preferred it without it. All right, but um, it's not Grand Cru Burgundy. But it's not Grand Cru Burgundy price. Uh, let's see what legendary Malbec. Uh, 2016, and I was saying with the uh, the Tino Pie Sauvignon, when you see Malbec now, you expect it to be from uh, uh, from Argentina, but this legendary Malbec is from Comte Tolosan uh, in southwest France. 2016 vintage. Let's give it a whirl. This smells juicy, slightly rugged, uh, dark plum, cherry, um, blackberry, black currant. It smells yeah, it smells like it's going to have a crunchy side. It's not particularly high in alcohol from what I remember. Twelve percent. Um, and um, so it's all, probably all going to be on that refreshing uh, edge of Malbec. Does that mean it's going to be a little bit underripe and maybe um, flaunt its slightly gawky tannins? Let's have a see. Hint of mint, um, some herbs. There is this green edge of tannin, but um, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's the sort of thing I want with some protein, with some, uh, uh, with some steak. And I think that those two would sit nicely together. And there's a freshness about it. It, it doesn't feel like it's uh, encumbered by uh, excess winemaking, which was my problem with the, uh, the Pinot Noir before. It's um, okay. Could probably do with a little bit more wine in the bottle, but um, as in more concentration. But it's, it's okay. Um, wine number eight, Brindle Ridge Merlot. We're back in Romania. Uh, 2017 vintage. I, I don't know whether it's actually 2017 vintage or whether it means it was bottled in 2017. And uh, um, I can't see a vintage specifically um, put on the label. Anyway, give it a whirl. This feels like it's had some of that um, uh, oak treatment that uh, I was commenting on on the um, on the Pinot Noir and on the Chardonnay, but here it seems to uh, be coping with it a little bit more successfully. I don't know whether that's extra ripeness and plushness and plumminess in the. Uh, in the wine, but um, it smells a little bit better balanced. Then when you come to taste it, that's when the, the disjointed bits come, come out. So there's a, a green tannin edge, there's this slightly gawky vanilla. Okay fruit, but it feels like um, it's been left with a little bit of re residual sugar to try and soften it out. And uh, so a finish I'm left with is a bit cloying and confected. So um, mm, not, not great. Let's see whether the final one's great. This is uh, Fontaine, du, Fontaine du Sud, Costier de Nîmes, 2016. Um, and uh, it's the only one of the, uh, of the nine with a cork in. So let's see, this is when it turns out to be corked. Uh, let's give it a whirl anyway. Well, it's, um, it's quite shy. I'm, I'm doing a, quite a lot of swirling and it's not really jumping out of the glass. Um, I get a little bit of um, dark plummy berry fruit, a bit of spice. Um, it uh, doesn't smell like it's massively overripe or anything. Let's see what the alcohol is. 2016 was a pretty good vintage in this part of the world, 13%. It's probably the most grown up of the wines. Um, it doesn't feel like it's relying on uh, excess wine making. It's got nice bit of freshness, a bit of spice, a little bit of earthiness. I've been commenting on slight green edge of tannins in some of the, some of the wines. Here it's got it, but it feels like it's, um, um, by itself, it's not something I want to sit down and drink by itself, but if you were to have that with some foods, with some protein that it could bite into, uh, then I think that would work um, work pretty well. So probably my favourites, Pinot Grigio, um, and um, I think the, yeah, Pinot Grigio, Costier de Nîmes, Sauvignon was okay, um, and uh, yeah, the, the Malbecs, Malbecs okay, but the, the rest of them, yeah. Nah, it's all, sort of all right, but um, I'm not uh, really jumping up and down, but um, these ones are fair enough. Hopefully you'll try and find them in your local spa and uh, go out and grab them, and I'll see you soon.